excuse me, <laughs> when you do, <laughs> you can't stay poor. I'm sorry, you cannot. You can't stay broke. You can't stay sick too long. Something might try to attack you, but you get through it. I had something happen to me that was really scary. It was scary. I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't tell anybody. Well, I told one person, two people. One, one didn't uh, know what to say, and the other one helped. Bravo. God bless you. You don't know. Some people, when they're kind and good, they don't know the blessing God's going to give them. They don't know. But it's going to be something, something great, because God saw what you, God saw it. So I went to uh, get it checked out and all that. I found there was just muscles. <clears throat> but the way I was feeling, it was really scary. You're like, is something wrong with me? <laughs> is this an attack? <laughs> a really bad one from within, you know? No. It was, it, it was external. I just laughed and thought, okay, it'll heal. It'll be all right. In a house, everything also has to have order, has to have people doing things. You know, God can give you a revelation. Like I was kicking some furniture, very heavy stuff, and I ripped my muscle. And the pain from that, you can't imagine. You, you just think, you just like, you know you're not going to, because I just confessed in my teaching, I'll live and not die, right? How many heard me say that on the broadcast before? All last week. I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. So I don't give a flip what the devil wants to do or who or what, or what my body wants to say. I'm going to live and not die. Hello. Hello, period, end of story. So, I mean, I already know that. But then something hits you in the pain. You don't know what on earth. So sure enough, that's what doctors are good for. Doctors are good, by the way. So I go to the doctor, ask him all the questions, and you figure out, again, that you're fine. Wow. Why? Because... God's healing covenant is with me. I don't care what the environment says, what has to happen. So I got a revelation out of that. said, I was never supposed to touch that furniture. I'm not lazy. I can pick stuff up like anybody else. Today I'm asking people to carry the heavy bags. Why? Because I don't want to strain myself. It's, and really God is showing me something. <clears throat> Someone can be like, oh my God. God showed me something. I, I, everybody needs to do something. I need to just stay in good shape to bring the word of the Lord to the earth. That's my job. Hello. I'm not carrying furniture around. I, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. The Lord, like the Lord looked at me like I, I got a revelation out of that. Can I tell you, when you tear your muscles, you don't even know the pain. It's unbelievable. I was a bodybuilder before I got saved and got into the ministry. And I knew another bodybuilder was also a, a, a world champion, Dennis Tenorino. Dennis Tenorino, he was uh, <clears throat> Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Universe, Mr. Olympia, and then Arnold Schwarzenegger came along and made it more famous because he went into movies. Dennis didn't become an actor. He was just that bodybuilder guy, and he's known, but he's not known like Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger's a global brand because of the Terminator movies and all the other movies that he did. So he brought more a spotlight more on bodybuilding, but Tinorino was the champion before him back in the 70s. Arnold came along in the 80s, late 70s or early 80s. And uh, when, you, when you do bench pressing... <clears throat> Really? When you do bench pressing to the level of, of, of high weight that's going to build your chest muscles, you tear them. And one time I overdid it. This was back in the, in the 80s, okay? And, I, and when I tell you the pain, you can't imagine the pain. I couldn't move. I couldn't turn this way or that way. I, and it's all across the chest, from the shoulders all the way across the chest, the muscles were torn. And you just move this way. You scream out loud. You don't know what else to do. It's that bad. So for moving these things, I felt it again. I tore some muscles. I mean, one night I I couldn't I couldn't move. I couldn't walk. I couldn't stand up. And I'm thinking this is like Armageddon. Come on, lift your hands. Praise the Lord. I'm like Jesus. <clears throat> what am I fighting here? Am I okay? You know that goes in your head. You know. So I go to the doctor. They do all these ultrasound things or whatever, and uh, 
<laughs> this was yesterday. <laughs> I'm not telling you an old story. This was yesterday. And I don't know what happened. I called an apostle friend of mine, yeah? Imagine that. I'm talking to him in the car when I'm supposed to go up and get the ultrasound thing. And someone's telling me, oh, they're about to close. Well, that's good because that means everybody's gone. I can walk right in and get it done and get out. And one place I went in there telling me, wear your mask, and they're acting all rude. I thought, well, one had them hanging off their face. I said, where's yours? And they went like this, ooh. You know, put up. I thought, you people are crazy. So, uh, there's, their, their machine thing was ex more expensive than the other place. So I went to another place that we knew, and they were closing so that I was the last one. I was able to just walk in. And it was cheaper. The price was cheaper, and they were a lot nicer, too. So, you know, went back to the doctor. He's like, this is muscles, whatever. But before I went in to do that, I called an apostle friend, not to talk about that, to talk about something in ministry. He said, is that why you called about this thing in the Bible? I said, no. I said, I really called about this, and I went on and on and on about <clears throat> something ministry, very ministry related. Then he goes like this. He goes, he goes. I, I haven't told him this yet, but maybe you, you're, if you're watching, I'll send you the video. You can, you can watch this as a testimony. He says, put your hand on your back where it hurts. I still had pain. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The night before, I couldn't move. What do you do when you can't sleep? You know, I, I couldn't sleep the whole night. I didn't sleep the whole night. Eight o'clock in the morning, I was delirious. I was like, Jesus, am I going to go into the day without any sleep? Are you kidding me? I said, I have to sleep. I finally got to a position where... I was in pain, but I was able to just fall asleep for a couple of hours anyway. Lord have mercy. She says, put your hand. So I put my hand on my back. Nothing changed right away. We started praying, you know, very calm prayer. Not like, you know, he give a shot the box, start screaming. He just spoke very calmly and then went through the motions of the prayer and he was done. Guess what? Say what? I said, guess what? What? I'm completely healed right now. I have no pain. Absolutely zero. It changed completely. Someone praise the Lord with me. I mean, it's not there anymore. And the doctor confirmed that there's nothing wrong. <clears throat> and then they give, well, they give you some painkillers, you know, and some uh, <clears throat> cream to put there. So I never did it my whole life. My whole life, I never put any of that cream. You know the cream for the muscles? Do you get that stuff? Never in my whole life did I do it. Someone bought me hot water bottles. Said, what am I, a woman? What the hell is this? Hot water bottle. I'm going to later with it. Let me get the hot water bottle. Like, I'm, what am I? What am I? What are you, nuts? What am I, in the nursing home or something? I mean, I don't need that. They're still in the bag. Someone bought them for me. I have them in the bag. And I'm scared the thing is going to open up and the water, the hot water is going to burn me, you know. So I don't know what to do with those things. I never in my whole life. So I put the, put this cream, took a painkiller. I, I guess that helped a bit too, but the prayer. Today I am completely, I don't have any feeling of it at all. It's gone. But the night before, it was like unbearable. You think you're going to, it's bad. I mean, like, what is wrong here? Jesus, am I going to have to end up in the, you know, it, it kind of gets into your mind, right? But guess what? I'm, I'm on my topic here. I'm not somewhere else. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm right there. The healing covenant of God, listen to me, from the word, uh, hello, from this right here is, in, is inside of me. So nothing can go beyond that. So once you're healed, you're healed. Once you're dwelling in protection, like Psalm 91.1, in the secret place of the Most High, under abiding on the shadow of the Almighty, that's it. You're done. Once you know the truth, John 8.32, you're done. You know it. You can't have anything otherwise. Now, i got to go a little further. Once you know the laws of prosperity, that God wants you successful, living a big, great life, you are done with poverty. Lift your hands, everybody, wherever you are. You're done with sickness. You're done with depression. You're done with any a thing that comes at you to hit you, even if it's the C virus or whatever. It's come to hit many servants of God. I know what I'm talking about. 
and you just fight it off. And then after a while, you're fine. It came to kill and destroy and steal, but it can't succeed. Why? Because you got the second half of the verse of John 10, 10 working in you. Jesus said, but no matter what they're doing, I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. I've come to give you the abundant life. So I have received that. Have you, have you received that? Make a new covenant right now to receive that right now, wherever you are. Just say, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, in Jesus' name, I have the abundant life. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. All over the world, we see it happening. But it, it can't touch me. You know, Jesus said what? The prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. Why? Because God is in me. Hello. Holy means what? One. Someone said holiness means uh, avoiding <coughs> drinking, smoking, clubbing. What? What do they, they say what people do in the world? I don't know what all that is. I don't do any of that. I have no interest in it. I mean, I've been delivered. Hello. I remember that Carmen song. I, Gary Oliver song. I've been delivered. I've been delivered completely. Like, how many? How many? Is it 35? It's going to be 35 years ago. 35 years. And you could take all that and stack it to the ceiling. I look at it and go, hmm, I don't want any of it. There's nothing in me. There's nothing in me that wants any of that. You see? Why? Because God took residence in me. Lift your hands. This exchange process needs to happen in every believer. This is very powerful what I'm saying. If this would happen to all the church folks, that's why I have a problem. I have a problem. I, now, I can't teach anybody who's a grown person and successful in their own way, whatever they're doing, to teach like the way that I do. Or to preach the, the life-changing messages and life-enhancing messages that I do. I, I, can't, I can't help them with that. I can't coach them on that. They're going to do, do things their way. But some of the stuff that's preached in churches is so shallow. Have you noticed? Talking about this story and this story and this thing and that thing. I'm like, what is that? What am I supposed to do with that? Are you kidding me? Now in the world, you got you got you got heathens doing uh, what marketing seminars and financial increase, and even people in the church are going toward that. I told the story before. There's a chap, uh, a couple in Atlanta, Georgia, and they're just doing all this business stuff now. But at one time, they had a church. I don't know what happened to their church. It's okay with me. I mean, it's their business. But people are going all over into that because they want money. They want a, they want fame and fortune. <clears throat> Me, I want Jesus. How about you? <laughs> I want him. That's what I want because he has everything. You think Jesus is a poor, broke lunatic walking around with a robe swinging around, waving things, carrying a, a sheep with a broken leg on his shoulder. What the heck is wrong with you? You looked at the pictures too long. You didn't read the word where he's full of power. What did he say I came to do in John 10, 10? I came to give you life. What did he say? And more abundantly, abundant life. What did he say in John 14? Be of good cheer. Uh, uh, John 16, 33. I've, I have overcome the world. So be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And he said what? I'll give you peace. The world can't give it to you. The world also can't take it away. There's also a song on that. Great song. But what do you say in John 14? In my Father's house are many what? Iron sheet shacks, cow dung in the back, goat dung on the side, human dung on the other side. Hello? Is that how to live? In my Father's house are many shacks. In my father's house are many open sewer pits that people sit in. You know, so, you know. Now, please, I love people, and I want to help them get out of that. I really do. I really feel compassion for people. <clears throat> There's something wrong with you if you have to take a seat next to the open sewer. You ever see people on the road that do that? Why do they sit there? Why? Because there's a downhill. They can put their feet down there. Why they want to bat? They want to bathe their feet in whatever's running by there. People throw garbage in there. Why, why is that the place to sit? Would I go sit there? 
You see the, 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 the commander in chief over across the lake now? See, I'm in Africa now. The commander in the, the, the fake uh, imposter commander in chief <clears throat> over there kneeling down, taking selfies with kids. Like, what? Well, you're, you're a grown man. So pe some people, some newscasters got really incensed. They were like, this is the president of the. <laughs> He's not supposed to do things like that. So guess what? I'm, I'm, come on, I'm going, I'm telling some embellishments, embellishing stories here, examples, but really it's a direct hit to every person, every believer. You're the one that's supposed to live this royal kind of life. Why? Because God said you are a king and a priest. You're a lady, you're a priestess. You're a, a queen if you're a lady. If you're a man, you're a king and a priest unto the Lord. We have this thing called dominion. That's the name of my ministry. That's what heaven. That's what heaven said. I didn't choose the name dominion, by the way. In uh, two thousand and no, excuse me, that was a long time ago. Nineteen ninety-seven. Yeah. Nineteen ninety-seven. I was preaching in Belgium. And I had an open vision. We went out to the land of the Huguenots, where the Huguenots had the <coughs> revival back in the 1600s there. It's a historic place. And we were in a certain place, and I looked up, and I had an open vision, and I saw from heaven, I saw this. Uh, it was solid diamonds. It was a solid diamond. But it had colors in it, so it was like had a, maybe there was some other precious jewels in there that have the colors. And it was carved out by the hand of God, one piece <clears throat> the top <clears throat> the top part of it was dominion and the bottom part of it was international but it was one piece and it came down from heaven toward me huge solid diamond solid precious stone and the lord shouted out loud in a loud voice this is the name of your ministry i thought wow because at the time it was thomas Manton ministries international you know like everybody does you know, they put their name, everybody, Jesse Duplantis, Joyce Meyer, who else? <clears throat> Kenneth Copeland, Creflo Dollar, who else? Everybody, everybody. Jerry Seville, it's okay to use your name in it, in the, in the organization, that's your name. I mean, that's, maybe that's what God told you. I thought T, TMMI is the greatest thing in the world. Thomas Manton Ministries International. I was like, that's awesome. Are you kidding? Is that awesome or not? Of course it is. I was like, wow, this is great. I thought of that. Great idea. And then God said no. He sent a, a carved jewel from heaven down to the earth. Notice it was jewel, it was jewel, which symbolizes wealth. And called it dominion. Then I found it in the Bible. I knew it was in the Bible already, but I found it more. By the way, when I started in the ministry, like at that time, I was very learned in the word. I had already been saved 10 or like 10 or 11 years so i was quite a student of the scripture for a long time but the word dominion meant a lot to me but i didn't know it was going to be like that so so and i'm gonna i'm again i'm telling an embellishing story but on the topic of this dominion that's the thing that god wants us to have prosperity john 10 10 the uh, b the second part of the verse <clears throat> second chronicles 20 20 B, believe the prophets, listen to the prophets, the prophetic voice, which is the voice of Jesus, really, and you shall prosper. <laughs> and then Jesus said what? I have overcome the world, be of good cheer. It's the prince of this world, the prince of darkness comes, but he has nothing in me. Holy, because I'm holy, I'm one with God. Are you seeing that? So separated unto the Lord, again, out from the things of the world and filled with God and his word and his covenant and his truth and now the devil the devil and all the things of the world they can't they can't affect you they can't take you out they can't it's not that they try and you wonder and you wrestle through no it's a settled thing already and once you know that that's it what comes or goes, it doesn't matter. What tries, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Some tries to come to attack you, you'll get through it. 
Boy, today I had a vision. I had a vision in the morning. I really feel great today. I tell you, I had something. Something really, God showed me a few things. And, and then not some spooky spiritual revelation about the Anakins or the, <laughs> the Amalekites or the, <laughs> or the Pharisees or the, no. It's about some things that we're going to do. <clears throat> very brilliant, very brilliant things. I was like, wow, Lord, this is great. I was thinking about something, and then the Lord gave me this as an answer. And I thought that's far better to do it that way. And we're about to do it. It's going to happen soon. Lift your hands. Very good stuff. We'll all be there. We'll all be there. The high life and the high level is, is, only, is the only thing you can have. But first, watch this. You have to hear about it. You have to be taught about it. You have to get it from the word. You have to hear it from the mouth of God through the voice of the prophet. Then you have to catch a hold of it. Now it's all in you. So when you look at anything else, you say, that's not my life. Doesn't matter if I'm right here. What, what does the scripture say? Come out from amongst them. Touch not the unclean thing. What is that? The shoes that have been sitting in the sewer. Maybe that's part of that. That's not for you. And, and you should weep and cry and pray for the people that are in this, stuck in that. So they learned that from somebody. What, what is it that, like, you have something good that's supposed to be so beautiful and people ruin everything? Because they're full of demons. They have the nature of the devil. They have the nature of, like, uh, I don't know, low-level living. They just can mess everything up. Everything's back to backwards, untoward. Why? When God is so brilliant. Lift your hands. Let's get this. Everybody check it with me out here. Listen to me right now. Let's catch this from God once and for all. God is big. He's brilliant. He's beautiful. He's bold. He's, he's courageous. He's rich. He's prosperous. He's none of the other things that we see on the earth. So let's catch that from him today as a covenant receiving, covenant a covenant making impartation. I decree it into your life right now <clears throat> that you can never again be poor. Someone said, well, how am I going to make money? Well, God will help you. You never again can be sick. Well, how, how's that going to happen with all this going around? God will help you. I can only be successful. I cannot fail. I can only prosper and succeed. Why? Because that's the nature of God. You can't have it any other way. That's just how it is. Am I that direct and strong and bold to tell you like that? Absolutely, a trillion percent. I never can tell you anything else. Someone says, well, I have this problem. I'm like, well, it can be solved. There's this issue going on. So what? It's temporary. You have to be like that. And never say anything you don't want to happen. People say the craziest things about themselves when they get all emotional. They just blurt things out. And I, th ah! I catch it. I'm like... I want to tell them, don't say that. Don't say that about yourself. That's, don't say that. You don't want it to happen. Oh, would you want that to happen? Oh, of course not. Then don't say it. You can live a life 24-7, 365, and 366 day every four years, which is the leap year, February 29th, the day they added. On the, on the shortest month, the 28th month, 28th day of February, they added 29th every four years. Somebody was born on that day. That's a weird thing. Born on leap year, so they only have a birthday every four years. So when they're 90, they're only like, what, 25, 22, 22 and a half. And they only had a birthday every four years. But every hour of every day, every second, every minute, every hour of every day, Every day of every week, <clears throat> every day in the 30 or the 31 days of every month, every day of the 365 days or 366 days in a year, you can be doing this. And what it does is it reproduces itself. We don't understand how, po how powerful faith is and the words that we speak. All right, I was going to read a lot of long scripture, but I can't do it. I, mean, I, I thank God for the anointing. Let's lift our hands and thank God for this. This is just the Holy Ghost. 
Now, I want to reference two scriptures, okay? Job chapter 2, you can read the whole thing. And also Nehemiah chapter 2 and Nehemiah chapter 4. <clears throat> and in those, let me, read, let me read a couple of verses from that. But I, I really, I really want to read it. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 2, there were enemies. There was distress in the land. Now, this is what we see also like in a place like Nairobi, Kenya. A lot of mess, slums, untowardness, people everywhere doing messy things, right? So they say, he said the wall has to be built up. So let's say, let's say by revelation, the wall of Nehemiah, the gates of Ju the walls of Jerusalem, <laughs> they had to be built up. We're not in Jerusalem. If you're in Nairobi or if you're, if you're in New York or you're in Miami or wherever you might be in the world, Cape Town or I don't know where you might be, you find yourself, London, England. You got to rebuild the thing. You got to rebuild your life. So let's say you have a, a lot of messy situations and a lot of things going on. You can attack it with this, with this scenario here and tell the Lord again and speak it out of your mouth and say, okay, uh, Nehemiah had enemies, those idiots, Sambala and Tobiah. Remember those two idiots? Sambala, Sambala and Tobiah. We can't find them. Idiots, majingas, because they're in hell. You think God took opponents out of, out of like after they died, they went to Abraham's bosom to wait for, for Christ to come and go into, descend into the innermost parts of the earth in, in Ephesians 4.10. He, he led captivity, uh, captivity captive and what gave gifts unto men. Really, that's kind of alluding to the part, the time where Christ went back into the Abraham's bosom and opened the gates and took the good people that were waiting for the salvation thing to come and to bring them to heaven. But you think that was like people like uh, Sambalat and Tobiah <laughs> and Judas Iscariot, who was full of the devil? It's sad. Okay, I'm not trying to be rude. Please, please don't get mad at me. Yeah, I'm not trying to talk about bad about any humanity, but these are people that made their choices to be evil. Who was evil else? The the one who enslaved the uh, the Israelites. Who was that? The uh, the Pharaoh. Like you see in heaven walking around with Moses saying, "Praise the Lord." You think? I don't think so. And God swallowed them up with the Red Sea. Do you think he went? Oh, that was just, I was just having a moment. <clears throat> No, I'm sorry. Come, you know, come, come after the fact. Like, let's go up and sit at my table, all you evil people. You think that happened? We have to be realistic and say, I, I don't think so. So just the way it is like that between righteousness and, and, and wickedness in the earth, so it is in our life where we want to challenge God with the good things that he gave us, and we want to, like, uh, insert something else into the plan of our life that's not his best. I, I would say, by the Holy Ghost, that's an insult to Jehovah. Let's lift our hands, everybody, and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry also for my people. Paul said, I want to stand in the gap for my people. It was a, it was a compassion apostolic prayer that came in him. We need people to have that. And Moses said, okay, if you're going to blot them out, then I'm going to stand in the way as an intercessor. And then Abraham said, God, if there be 50 righteous, would you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? God said, no. And then he got down to 10, but there wasn't even 10. And then the fire fell. Right? So even Abraham couldn't stop it from happening. So let's understand, let's have the fear of God and stop messing around with God. When he gave us so much, but we think it's okay to have something else. It's an insult to Jehovah. I, maybe no one's ever told me this before, but I'm glad to be the one to tell you. We got to stop that. You see mess and nonsense, does it, does it irritate you and grieve you? You see wickedness. You see all kinds of untoward living and people and all their foolishness. Does it, does it bother you? It bothers me a lot. Why? Because I'm prophetic. I'm sensitive. And here's another thing. When you, when you receive from God the spirit of wisdom, <clears throat> you, you, see, you look at everything and you can see what's wrong. You, you talk to a Solomon and ask if he could see foolishness or not in a heartbeat. And he, talked, he, he spoke against it. So what makes us any different? 
in our generation. I got to rebuke the, the society in Africa that I've seen when they want to stand up for everything that's wicked. They want to defend the wicked because they're in their country with their people, so it's okay. It's okay, Sawa Sawa. It's not okay. Wickedness is wickedness. It's not okay at all. And if you leave it like that, God can look at you and go, huh, well, you're, one, you're, you're part of the problem. You weren't part of the solution. You didn't help them. So people need to be trained. Every young person needs to be told, you know, God's rich. You're supposed to be rich like him. Hello. You're not supposed to live in some... But people that didn't know, they're, it's called ignorance. Ignorance means not knowing. Stupidity is when you're supposed to know or know and you don't do right. That's, that's a different thing. That's a willful choice of a person to be the S word. S-T-U. But ignorance is not really uh, 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 such a derogatory term by itself. It just means that you don't know. You don't know. You're not aware. So why not? Because God is everywhere. I, I look at the amazing... I, I've never found so many beautiful birds. If you look at my social media page, every time I see these colored, exotic, multicolored birds, I, I post it because I want people to look at what God did. There was this <clears throat> amazing, huge, uh, scorpion-looking-like beetle thing and I don't know if I posted that one or I have to post I might have posted I have to look and see if I did. I might have just kept it in my notes. But if I, if not, I need to post it. It's a, a bit of a scary picture because it has these big, giant insects, right? And it's like as if they were talking, saying, please don't kill, please don't kill us because we're doing good for the environment. I, and we eat all the bad stuff, you know? We, we're producing something on the farms. We have a purpose. God put us here. Please be nice to us. <laughs> Ladybugs, you know the little ladybugs, those little <clears throat> ladybugs, those little tiny bugs, they live about one year, and they said they eat like five, up to 5,000 aphids in a year in their, in their lifetime, which is a span of a year. Be nice to us, don't kill us, we have a purpose. But they're doing something good. Aphids are the ones that eat the crops, those little green uh, things, they come and destroy the crops. These little tiny ladybugs with the dots on them. You know, you, you ever have one land on you, walk up your hand? They're eating those evil things. They have a great purpose. Everything God created has a great purpose to be beautiful and productive. Lift your hands. I said I was going to talk about productivity. Here we are. To be productive and produce and create. This is the nature of God. Not to destroy not to, like, leave things messy. Nehemiah saw the mess and got stirred up. <clears throat> Isaiah 61 also has the reference there that says, he'll be the rebuilder of the waste places. You will be. When you're anointed, he says, Spirit of the Lord is born for you, me to preach God to the, to the poor and uh, to bring uh, uh, healing to the brokenhearted. The oil of gladness for... Mourning and heaviness, beauty for ashes, yeah? And then after that, he says, for your shame, you'll have double. God, there was a promise of prosperity right there. And then he said further in Isaiah 61, probably around the seventh verse, you will be re recreators and restorers and rebuilders of waste places, messy things. Somebody said, can I be like Nehemiah by myself? Probably not. Can I be a Jeremiah who went through hell, was thrown into the sewer pit? See, Jeremiah was thrown there. He didn't go there by choice. And he knew he wasn't supposed to be there. Paul was thrown into a prison. He didn't, you know, it just kind of happened. He didn't really think it was probably the best place to be. But he was alone there, so he had time to write. <laughs> he wrote the epistles there because he didn't have any noise, right? He was able to meditate. So God knows all these things. But everything's supposed to produce. Your life is supposed to produce something great. So the restorer, Isaiah 58 talks about repairing the breach, the thing that was breached or broken open. Nehemiah was going to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem. 
And then they found so much garbage there. It talked about refuse, you see, in uh, chapter 4. Also in chapter 2, it talks about it. And these enemies that, that wanted to stop the progress. God whipped them all. He had the <clears throat> it said The scripture says, <clears throat> it gets a bit fierce. Jeremiah, uh, excuse me, Nehemiah, he, okay, that's two. I want to get to four. Here it is. Nehemiah chapter four is what he did. In the 10th, 11th, 12th verse, 13th verse, he said, he positioned people with swords and spears and bows to guard the thing, and then he told them to uh, not be afraid of the enemies because the Lord was with them, and they also had their weapons of war to do. And then when they went one place to build, they saw so much refuse, they thought it's impossible to get through. But they did. Someone say hallelujah, they did. They got it done. So you see an impossible situation, God says, this is possible to finish and correct, and it will happen. Look at Ezekiel 37. The valley of the dry bones, God said to, to, to Ezekiel, uh, the prophet, can these bones live and come alive again? Ezekiel had to answer, God, you know. That's such a, a, a big question. How can I answer that? I don't know. But you know. And if you say so, they will. So God's the God of, of, of the impossible. So you can't say the society is this way, <clears throat> the city is this way, things are this way, and have it as a valid excuse in the, in the ears of God. He won't, he, won't, he won't take it from you. We need to respect God and fear God. A lot of people don't. They think church is a culture club. They, they have just as much fun maybe dancing in the church as they're doing going to the club drinking, and a lot of people do that these days. You know that? A lot of people do all kinds of stuff like that. You don't even know. I'm not interested at all. Seven days a week, I'm in the presence of God every single day. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. It doesn't matter what I'm walking through. Not at all. God's talking to me all the time. It's always switched on. It never gets switched off. What a life. But we can all have that. In God is everything. <clears throat> I was talking about people that they see things in the world and things that look big and fancy. For what? You want to show it off? I saw a Range Rover, beautiful red burgundy. Yes, that's good in America, maybe, or Europe, where you don't have people on the street that want to kill you. Hello. And when you're anointed, you're a fierce warrior. There's people that are so carnal and jealous, even in the church, they want to kill you. I, yeah, I'm talking here. I'm talking here. So I said by, by wisdom, I said, I don't want a red one. I drive by, everybody's going to know. There's that Mzungu. There's that prophet. There's Jesus, Yesu, with the long hair. And they hate you. Trash heap, trash heaps mentality of people. I know them. How am I talking? So said, give me a black one <clears throat> that blends in with everybody else, with dark windows. Nobody knows who's in there. They think it's one of the politicians because there's so many of those cars. That's what I want. And I want a number plate that no one can remember. I don't want three numbers in the same in the same plate because people could look and remember. You want the hardest one to remember. Like K D Z you know, three seven two S, you know, or, or H. Who can remember that? You flash by, no one can remember it. Good. Hide in the crowd because why? Because of all these idiotic people full of hatred. And they're the same ones that cause trouble. They got like the spirit of Alexander the coppersmith. They got the spirit of uh, Demas wants the world. They got the spirit of 
<clears throat> Ananias and Sapphira, they want to lie and steal. They got the spirit of Judas they want to betray. Come on. They got the spirit of Absalom. They want to topple your kingdom to have something for themselves, but they don't know that they can't have it. Because God gave it to David and then, then to Solomon. He didn't give it to Absalom. Absalom wanted to take it. And he hung in a tree. And he died young with a snapped neck. What a buffoon. And maybe the prayers of David, could they have saved or rescued his, his foolish son? I don't know. So you get to heaven and ask uh, Jesus, where's Absalom? Is he here? That son of David. Can I talk to him? Jesus might go. Who? Go ask Peter at the gate. Open the book. <laughs> I'm making a joke. I'm sorry. Go ask, go, go ask the, the account, the, the uh, caretakers, you know, look through the files, see if they see such a name. Come on. We, we have to fear God. Stop thinking that it, things that are evil are okay when they're not. Absalom thought he could take it. You know, there are people that think like that. I had an experience recently. Somebody kept kneeling down and wanted me to pray for them. They're holding on to my leg and all that. They're trying to steal my anointing. I'm telling you the truth, right here. Down the road, they're trying to, they, they just want to take my anointing. They see what it is, they see how great it is, and they say, I want to take that. You can't have it. You play with me the wrong way because something else could come your way. Don't fool around with me. Hello, I'm talking here. That's what they want. Stress me out. I tell you, they're like, I'm thinking I'm being nice, you know, to minister to people, and they want me to keep doing meetings and coming here and coming there. I finally said, I have to stop. <clears throat> Yesterday, I was invited to an event, and I told them, I really, in my heart, compassionately, I really wanted to go. I really did. I did. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Like, I didn't have the grace. So I, I thought about it this morning, and the Lord gave me another picture and said, they're inviting you, but good people, I want you to invite them. So anybody that's good, let me tell you, if you get on my platform and I invite you to come and speak, you're a very high-quality person. And it's a privilege, and you'll be treated well and all of that. So I look forward to that. That's the way we're going to do it. And then I thought about it. I said, I feel so at peace. I feel healed and happy and great. I can't go running around, banging around, like trying to, to do all this for these people. I have to have, we're building our own work. And there's an inner theme to this in the spirit today about building God's house. See, Nehemiah heard specifically and was given a passion and a burden. Moses heard from God specifically and was raised up to have a passion and a burden for one thing, <clears throat> to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. That was his job. And when he was done with it, God took him. He even carried his body away somewhere that no one could find it. They told Joshua, Moses, your boss is gone. My servant is gone. Now you... I'm raising up. I've chosen you. Look at Solomon. Solomon was smart enough to want to learn and kind of do the right thing, though he had his ups and downs too, like, every, like even David had a lot of them too. But Solomon got it. He caught the grace. Absalom could never get it. The other kids could never get it. Remember David when uh, Jesse's sons were there and Samuel the prophet went to anoint and... Uh, None of their sons were the choice of God. So Samuel had to say, I've been through these six sons, and God, I don't get a witness. Do you have another son, maybe? Because God sent me here to anoint the next. And then Jesse probably scratched his head and said, oh, my God, it can't be David. In fact, we didn't even invite him in. We told him to stay outside. Am I, am I right? Is that, is, that, is that what the Bible says? Was David amongst the six in the house with Jesse, the father? Yes or no? He wasn't. Where was he? He was outside, rejected of men, but chosen of God. You know that scripture in Peter also. We, 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 you can't play with God. 
You got to stop playing with God. Father, I thank you for the life that you've ordained for us, for what we're supposed to build. It's not a joke. It's not like a suggestion. It's a command and a commissioning. <laughs> so productivity getting to the word. Building the house, that's what I'm talking about. Fearing God, yes. Important. So Sam Ballard and Tobiah got the answer from, uh, from uh, I keep wanting to call him Jeremiah, Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 2. There's a translation of in Nehemiah 4 that also says, Lord, give us a, a, a there's a prayer that uh, Nehemiah prays. I, I don't have the exact address of it right in front of me. He says, Lord, give us a people with a mind to work, to build with me. Lift your hands. Wow. It's so important to have people. As I was saying, one person can't do everything. I tried to move a big piece of furniture and I ripped my muscle. I didn't know what was going on. I thought I had some internal <laughs> problem. It's not. It's proven to be muscular. What'd you do? I said, oh, I did that. I wasn't supposed to touch that. So is it, can I do everything? Of course not. A, a people with a mind to work, a lot of people working in the thing. That's how it's going to get done. That's the, in the realm of productivity. Excellence, prosperity is the character of our life. Now, I, I want to get to that in a second, and we're going to close. I won't be long here. This, uh, this, this Nehemiah said, in the 17th verse of chapter 2, verse 17, he said, You see the distress that we are in in Jerusalem. It lies waste, and its gates are burnt with fire. Who are the idiots that burnt the, the gates that disturbed old Nehemiah? He was annoyed. I got a joke. Who's the shortest man in the Bible? Nehemiah. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> All right, uh, that's not in the message, but I'll just throw it in there. Yeah, he wasn't—he wasn't short like that, but it's a joke. Come, he said. Come. He, he didn't just say, "Oh, look how bad it is." Oh, we know. Oh, it's just like that. T I K. This is Kenya. T I A. This is Africa. Next time someone says that, you should slap them right upside their head and say, you're supposed to do something to change it. Shut up with that colloquial talk. You think it's all right. And that's how it is. And then here's the other one. One said it to me in a shop the other day, and I rebuked the guy. He got a little scared. I said, I don't accept that. That doesn't compute in my language. I don't care. The guy, this guy is a, is a I'll put an underscore because I don't want to say what I think about the guy. Not good, by the way. <clears throat> Here's, here it is. Here it is. Ready? You, you've heard it before. Some people are different. You want to get me stirred up? Say that to me. Some people are different. I said, no, they're not. I said, the guy is a, and I described what he is. And he'll never, have a, he'll never, he'll never be able to connect with me or work with me. Then the other guy says, oh, some people are different. You see how people accept all the nonsense? And then the other one is, now, now this you have to do a bit. I've learned this. Oh, just ignore them. You have to do that or you'll go insane. Hello. <laughs> you have to do that or else you won't make it. You have to have some grace to look. I remember when I got to, to London, England to do a meeting, and I saw so many things that were so bad when I first went there. I was so annoyed. Oh, boy, just like when I came to Africa the first time, I was so annoyed. I was like a maniac. You don't even know. You think I'm, you think I'm intense now. I, I'm not. I was a thousand times worse or better, whichever, you, however you look at it. I was so annoyed. And one guy, this apostle, you know, real religious guy, talks real proper, you know, had this kind of voice. <clears throat> I don't know where he was from. He wasn't from England, he was from another, but he had the British accent, you know. He said, I have the word of the Lord. The Lord said to overlook. I thought, yeah, I get you, thank you very much. 
overlook. Yeah, all the nonsense at the overlook. So he's, but he, but he too was wrong in a way because he's trying to stick up for that. Maybe, maybe God was trying to help me to say that, but overlook. No, I need to look right. Not really. I need to let, not look over it. I need to look right at it and destroy it. Lift your hands. Very few people think like this. Very few people have any interest in really changing things. But God, God wants to have thousands of them. Let's everybody right now claim that grace. I mean, you, it doesn't mean that you're going to get, you know, inducted or invoked or drafted into some scary thing that's going to harm your life and mess you up and you're going to go through hell. I, I'm not, not necessarily. Maybe, maybe so, if God, if God deems it that way. But, but why, do, why do people just think everything's okay? It's okay. It's not okay. Things need to be changed. Did they, if you tell Nehemiah, it's okay like that. Okay, we like burnt wood on the gates. No problem. Kind of was like Nyama Choma, burnt meat. I remember one time this lady in our office told me finally what, the, what Nyama Choma means from Swahili. It means burnt meat. <laughs> so we like burnt meat. It's okay. It's kind of like that, like burnt gates. What's the big deal? It's in fashion around here because everything, everything's a mess. So uh, you tell Nehemiah that he had got he he didn't just, he wouldn't just slap you. He had a group. Of, he had all of his people with bows and swords and weapons. <laughs> he didn't want to become his enemy. He might tell, "Hey boys, pierce this one through with the arrow, you know, and throw him in the throw him to Sambalat and Tobiah over that way." You know. I'm in the Bible. This is the Bible. I love it. This is the Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you things from the Bible. Yes or yes? And then look at like Haman wanted to hang Mordecai. Did the king say, oh, it's okay. Don't worry, Haman. No problem. Pat him on the back. Just go on back to your house. Calm down with your rage. No, he hung him. He said, you wanted to do this to this people? And Esther was there who had favor. And she was already in his ear about how bad things were going for the Jews and she came to, as a deliverer, a woman was prepared to get to the king to deliver them. So the king now had this favor toward them. And that, watch this now, from scripture, this whole thing was the act of God. This was an act of God. This was a drama, movie, however you'd want to say, stage production, plan of God in reality, in motion. That's what God wanted to do. So, just looking at these things here, do we want to leave things the way they are? God could take you and throw you off and say, you never had my heart. You don't want to be one of those ones in Matthew 7, 7, where he says, I never knew you. Oh, we were in church. Ha, kisha, baha, ho. We were in church. I have to tell you one of the funniest things I ever saw in my life yesterday when I was at the clinic getting the ultrasound thing, I was looking at the TV and Citizen TV came on. And they had all the people, they had all the costumes, you know, the tailor made, matching costumes made. I have a tailor, but he's gonna be very busy with doing my new suits. So I don't wanna give him that job. We're gonna have another tailor do that for the, <clears throat> the singers. And we'll have that, we'll have that. We'll have people with the costumes and everybody should be in costume, even the drivers. Even people in the office. Why not? I don't mean like funny stuff. I mean nice, you know, quality clothes, clean, nice. We should be dressed well. Come on. No need to come to church with a smudged T-shirt looking like you just came out of the... We'll give you a shirt to put on. We'll make that. Don't worry about it. We'll have a nice pair of trousers and you look like a, an executive assistant. Yes? Yes or yes? Okay, thank you for the yes. <clears throat> and um, they were doing the song, and a chimpanzee was there, and he came and he did the dance with them. He went down like this, and he did da da da, -da, -da, -da to the music. I was like, God Almighty, what am I looking at? And I was trying to get my phone to capture the screen, 
And every time the, the monkey came, he, they, he, they jumped to the next frame, the next camera, whatever. I couldn't get it. I said, this is awesome. But they all look very elegant. Even the animal was in sync with the music. Lift your hands. There, there's some production there. There's some, there's some excellence there. And I know someone in that network. I'm going to talk to them and say, where was that thing done? I want to do something like that. You'll see it soon. Soon, I hope, in this lifetime, I hope, we can have some things like that and really, really glorify God and have some great worship and music, all of that exciting. But everything was in, everything there was excellent. Regardless of the style of it, even the creation of the animals were in tune. Did you ever see the picture? I posted this some time ago. An elephant actually was so smart with his trunk, you know, the long thing where it doesn't even have hands or anything, the whole fingers, the whole thing, held it, a paintbrush, and drew a framed picture of another elephant on a, on a, on a, on a, on a canvas. Whew. An elephant is that smart. The creation of God, like I was talking about the, the beauty of these birds. I'm seeing birds now because of the internet, because of the internet. We wouldn't be able to have this any other way because you, you not only would have to buy the book, buy the magazine, or see it on a television program. But now because of the internet all of the, and photography and technology, you can see, and all of these kind of animals I never knew existed. Like the Duak, uh, du Duak uh, Langor monkeys in Southeast Asia. They have red legs, black feet, white arms, black hands, powder blue eyelids, orange face, white lips, orange beard, white beard, black hair on top of their head, dark gray, you know, silver belly, uh, dark gray, charcoal gray shoulders, and then silver here and white here and black hands. Who did that? It's, it's phenomenal. Beautiful eyes. Looks like, you see, you think it's like somebody painted it from their imagination. These are real creatures of God. They're in the jungle in uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, over there in Southeast Asia, up in the jungle there, maybe Thailand. You'll see them. Who did that? Our organized God. Now you see how everything else in the world was trashed by devils and unruly people. It's not okay. So Nehemiah sees it and does what? And these enemies that were trying to fight them, here's what he told them. I could share a lot of things about this, but I want to just get to this real tight point here. He said, Jerusalem will be built again and not be a reproach. It won't be wasted and broken. Let me prophesy Nairobi should be like that. Lift your hands. I can't do it all. I'm also a foreigner. I'm walking around as a foreigner. I can't tell everybody what to do in the way that some local other person could talk to you, talk to each other. I'm the visionary. I could speak the message as I'm doing, but other people, a lot of people need to implement it. God and me are the initiators. We're invo and I'm invoking it by speech. The three eyes. God initiates. We invoke by speaking. Him and me are doing those two things. But the implementation is done by the people. I also, God had me prophesy over, over the United Kingdom, and I'll say this again. The way revival is going to happen in England is not just through the foreign person who's come there, although that happens, but the local British person, the person of the soil, the native people have to catch the fire of God, and they do it in their own way, the cultural way, and they bring it. Like Evan Roberts was a Welshman back in 1902, 1903, 1904. The, the Welsh revival broke out. A young man in Wales cried against what was wrong. And God showed up and fixed the whole place. The bars closed down. Even the animals that used to go into the mines, the drunken guys that w rode on them used to cuss at them, use bad words. And they got saved. So now they can't say those words. Yeah? So the donkeys didn't know what to do. The mules, they just stood there. <laughs> they had to retrain the animals to take the command of, of, of clean language because these people got saved and to, to follow the instruction. Can you imagine? 
The police, the policemen had no, no work because no one was committing any crimes. Lift your hands. You, you think this is not possible? Look at history. It happened. Charles Finney was so anointed in America, in the East Coast, he went from like Washington, D.C. area up to like New England states, New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania, all that. Virginia, Washington, D.C. area. And he would just drive into a city, but he had intercessors that went before him. And when he get to a place, he walked into a factory one time and all the workers fell off their chairs and fell on the ground and started crying, screaming for God. He never said a word to them. He just carried them. You tell me it's not possible? Charles Finney, tell Charles Finney it's not possible. He was an attorney. And he got tired. He said, not for, he, said for, he went into the woods to fast and pray in the forest. And he, and he told God, he got a, a revelation and a visitation from God. He said, I will no longer try the cases of men in the courts of men, but I'll only bring the cases of men before the court of heaven the rest of my days. He left his practice, quit his job, quit his career, and went into it being an evangelist. And everywhere he went, the glory fell. You tell me it's not possible? There's a guy in, in outside of Nairobi, Kenya, who I don't know what the locals did to this guy. I don't know how much they hated him because he had, he's literally in the history, the annals of history and the transformation videos that George Otis did. Transformations of regions. He's, he's in there. But if you ask people in Nairobi, uh, his name, they don't even, they never heard of him. So the existing church I'm saying something here. The existing church wanted to slaughter the guy because he wasn't part of them. But is it yet possible? And I know what that's about. Is it yet possible to have a move of God? Yes, it is. Ask Nehemiah if it wasn't possible because he got it done. Ask Moses if it wasn't possible. God opened the Red Sea when it looked like they were all going to die. God came and showed up and had them come out. And they came out with the wealth of the nation. Is it possible that things can change? Joel chapter 2. Uh, you can read it, but I think I need to just... I think I just need to grab a verse here. There's so much. Hey, this is what I want to say. Okay, here it is. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Do not be afraid. It said, be glad. I'm skipping through a bit. I want to get to a certain point here. And uh, rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down upon you, not just one or the other, but the former rain and also the latter rain, even in the first month, even in a month's time. Could you imagine? And he said that uh, new wine... And vats filled with oil will overflow for you. That's the plan of God. But where do, we, where do you see that happening on a daily basis around? You don't see it because people don't even know this. So I, God is initiating. I'm invoking right now by speaking it. <clears> then <throat> people will catch it and implement it. So Nehemiah said in Nehemiah 2.17, uh, let, let me skip up a bit. He really mocked these guys, these idiots that were opponents. And he said, I answered them and said, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Lift your hands. This is part of the covenant. That's for, the God of heaven himself. Remember Abraham said, Abraham said to, 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 about the king, no man has made me rich but almighty God. Nobody's going to have the testimony that they helped me or made me what I am, God, God's covenant. He's our source. Lift your hands. Let's pray.
He said, the God of heaven himself will prosper us, and we his servants, therefore, will arise and build. But you, devils, you idiotic evildoers and opponents, you will have no heritage or right in this thing. So literally he spoke, he spoke that, and that's how it was going to be, that they, they tried to attack, they tried to oppose, but they're not going to have any part. And what about all the people in the, in the middle of it, in the balance? They're the ones that need to get touched. But God's plan is for everybody. <laughs> everybody. Write the word down, everybody somewhere. Everybody, including me, are going to have this thing. Let me, in Jesus' name, so be it. We receive it from you, Lord. The prosperous life, the healed life, the covenant life that as I was talking about. Everything great. Everything healthy, everything rich, everything righteous, everything good, everything integritous, everything fixed. Shalom, the word shalom even means nothing broken, nothing missing. Nothing broken, nothing missing. Everything suffice. Jireh means the Father who oversees us and sees our future and sees to it that it happens with provisions. Provision, P-R-O, means F-O-R, for the vision. Now I want to talk about excellence just for a minute, and I'm going to close. I'm coming in for a landing here. Five reasons that people struggle. Five reasons. This is in my book, The Benefits of Excellence. By the way, you can get an e-copy of this by being a partner uh, of the ministry, and you become a partner of the ministry by sowing into the ministry. So you from far lands away, you can do. I had a gentleman from South Africa, uh, a young man of God, uh, send me a, a seed of, I think, 1,500 rands. He did it by r world remit. World remit. And he knew how to use that because he had a desire to learn how. And he wanted to sow. And it came through to the M-Pesa uh, in Kenya, direct in the same hour, like an instantaneous transference. He wanted to sow that seed. By that, he's now a partner. And I sent him some materials. I'm going to send him some more, and I'll also send you more as I have... Several other books we're going to be working on and getting them out, but uh, <clears throat> this book called The Benefits of Excellence, I have it in E, a digital format that I can send you uh, <clears throat> where you become a partner of the ministry as my gift, and you, you do that by sewing. We just went live with a new website, thomasmanton.com. If you click on that, everybody should look at it. It's got some new things on there, a new look. We're going to add a lot to it. It's not nearly done. We have to edit a lot of the things, but it's live. It's good. Uh, more is being added now these this week, and uh, we're going to have a lot more coming on. New web pages, new newsletters. A great apostle in America gave me a word this week, and it was really riveting. I am just... It's, uh, it's heavy. And he gave me an instruction, something he was concerned about. That he said, I'm concerned that your messages are not everywhere. And he even used the word like, uh, you don't want to hurt people by them not getting the benefits of what your ministry is bringing. I thought, oh, God. That's, that's the, where he was coming from saying, I said, I have to take action on this. So... And he was telling me he's not seeing my writings, he's not getting any mail from me. And I thought, well, this is the old school where big ministries, they would send a letter out to people. So maybe I won't do it that that quickly, but at least online, digitally, I can get so many things and I'd be sending them to literally millions of people. That's the vision that God's given me. We, we have to do it. We have to, we have to take it there. So this is on digital, thank God. 
and I have to write to this man of God, he wants to hear from me, he wants to read my stuff. Isn't that heavy? And he's saying, like, people are being hurt, they're losing by not getting your messages. That's what he said. And he said it, like, with tears in his eyes. It was a different, I thought, Like, you, ever, you want to say, like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm being called out. <laughs> I'm being called out. They're like, yes, Lord. So we have to do that. We have to. We have to. We have to. So God gave me, and this is in the book, God gave me reasons that people are in endless cycles of suffering and struggling. They're in a cycle. They're in a circle of it. They're messed up. They're ensnared into a, a, a struggling situation. Number one, misplaced environment. They're in the wrong place. Or they're, or they're, or they're seeing the wrong things. I want to add to that. They're seeing the wrong things. People are seeing the wrong things. Too much. And their environment is all messed up. They're in the wrong relationships, the wrong people. Someone said, if you want to rise high into success, you have to uh, you have to be you have to be friendly with, with successful people. One of the one of the keys of, of success and increase is OPQ. Oh no, O Q P, sorry. OQP, only quality people. Now that may sound vicious, but I'm not, maybe I'm not talking to everybody. People that want to be successful, you only want to be with quality people. Because people that are bad, they'll try to mess you up because that's their nature. You have to get them out. You have to see them and toss them. Don't be afraid of changing a relationship. You only have to have good people in your world. Say amen to that. It'll help you because the wrong people will mess you up. 99% of someone being messed up by situations is because they trusted the wrong people. They had the wrong people in their world. I know. Been bit by that ravenous animal, was bleeding and wounded very badly. Hello. I know from experience. I have a credentials in life experience to talk about that. My God. Wrong engagements, doing the wrong things, wasting time. There's so much to say in each subheading here. Number four, lack of divine updating. God wants to keep updating you. Like I, I was saying, the Lord gave me so many things this morning. I'm just amazed. Things we're going to do. I, I feel it. It's the time. And we're going to make it happen. Number five, disobedience to God's commands. Well, that sounds shallow in a way, like someone gets convicted, like, oh, am I perfect? Am I perfect? Yeah. If you have a problem, this is the prayer you pray. I'm going to help you. First John 1 and 9. Lord, I confess I've missed it. All right? Now, please forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. This is my covenant connection with you. By doing that, you restore yourself back to a, a clean slate because God said he won't remember the sins from the east from the west. You could ask God later on of things that you confessed or got rid of, right, in your life. And God, it, 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 God says, what are you trying to remember? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, now according to the scripture, that's where I get that. That's not our, our, our philosophy about something. As far as the east is from the west, I will not remember. If God says, I will not remember, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means he will not remember. <laughs> yes or yes? If he says, I will not remember, you go to ask him. He says, I don't remember. You'd feel very stupid. Wouldn't you feel foolish? If you would ask God, like, remember that? He's like, what? That tells us we need to forget about it. Hello. All right, I'm coming in for a landing here. So I don't have time to read any other keys of excellence, but they're in the book. You can get a copy of this book by becoming a partner. Have you been blessed today? God, I've shared so much. 
And uh, thank you, Lord, for excellence, for productivity, that we're builders, that we're being productive, and that we're taking the covenant of reality, of prosperity, of health and healing, of protection, and all of these things are the truth. They're from the truth. So when they're in us, we can't have any other kind of life. In Jesus' name, poverty can't be our portion. Failure and uh, being unorganized, it's not for us. Everything has to be excellent. Yesterday, the Lord took me in another direction. I was continuing a series on healing, and the Lord began to speak to me about prophetic the prophetic office, the prophetic ministry, about honor, about things of ministry, of spiritual dimensions of things. And one of them was honor. The honor that you have, it like produces a royal atmosphere. And when you're, when you're dishonorable or dishonoring, it, it trashes everything and brings it down to a mundane level. So honor is a key to climb. Honor is the key to climb up higher. Thank you, Lord. Many people writing this down. Yes. Honor. It's powerful. And it's not just like honor of a, of a person in a, in, a, in, a, in a human way. It's honor in the spirit to the spiritual grace and glory. And that produces life. Gives you back a blessing. Because God is a God of abundance, increase. He's the one that will take you to the highest places you've ever been. In Jesus' name. All right. <clears throat> I'm not done, but I got I got to pause here. I feel like coming in for a landing, a landing, the landing, and, and we'll pause this. We'll pick it up at the next session. But uh, are you being blessed? All right. I won't give a song as an outro right now. We're going to just jump off here, but later we will. But for time's sake, too, I want to I want to dash and 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 move up from here. Move out of here. Father, I thank you for the fire of heaven that you're going to just release it upon your people that they will become, I, I, I just want to say it, many will become billionaires and multimillionaires. In your currency, even billionaires, a billion level. Dollars, that's a high one. But in other shillings and whatnot, you could be like some $10 million is a billion shillings, okay? So you can get $10 million. Let's start with millions, okay? But I don't want to talk about just uh, facets of money amounts, but <clears throat> on that level of living, more than you have just to survive, because of the covenant of God, and any disease or ailment that tries to come your way. Now, I'm in 3 John 2, okay? I'm saying this in sequence according to the scripture. 3 John 2 says, I want you to prosper. I just talked about that. Money, prosperity, blessing, and healing and health. He wants you to be in that and have a sound mind, soul prosperity, which is also knowing the word and knowing the covenant. There's so much in that, just from that one verse. And I pray and I speak that over you, precious one. I speak that over your life. You can't live in poverty. You can't live in sickness. Whatever's going on in your world, God is going to give you a way out of it and bless you because you're his. You can't have a deranged mind, be in depression and sadness, and everything doesn't seem to work. I break the curse. Last week I spoke of a, a message about breaking the curses. The Lord spoke to me, invoking blessings and destroying curses. I break every curse in Jesus' name that's come upon you, that's tried to stop your progress and keep you from getting into the promised land of God. What The big things that he has from you. Or you see it, you're on the way there, but you never get there. God wants you to get there in this season right now. It's time for us to get there right now. Intangible reality. Nothing can divert it, and just like nothing can keep you sick, keep you broke, keep you down. Why? Because the truth is in us that we've been made free, like according to, as I was saying to John 8, 32. John 14, 6, I said, I, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And nobody can come to the Father except through me. But when they do, they're receiving all these things. The way to salvation, the way to prosperity, the way to blessing, the truth, and the life. And again, in John 10, 10, second part of the verse, Jesus says, I have come that you have life, and that more abundantly. This is a, 
a, a tangible thing that needs to manifest now. In Jesus' name, Father, I speak it over every one of our precious friends and partners and people that they will have this. And by the truth that you've had me teach on here today, that they can grab a hold of this and says, I see it. I can't live an untoward life. I can't fight with God who said I should live this way in abundance. And yet, there seems to be another way to live. There is no other way to live because God has said it. And the thing is, how you get it is when you catch it. And you say, I've heard it, I accept it, I've said yes, now that can be my only way of living. And I declare it so over so many more people from today in Jesus' name. All right, I love you. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I'm praying for you. Thank you for partnering with the ministry. You can sow seed in the ways that are in the... Uh, description there and partner with the ministry and I'll be glad to send you uh, one of my digital books as a, as a blessing to you as you partner with us. So be it, I love you. I know you can tell. You love me too. Thank you for praying with us, for us, for praying for you, for the work of God to be established so greatly in this day, more than we've ever seen. We want to take uh, Holy Communion right now, <clears throat> as we do every Sunday. We'll do it till Jesus comes back. I don't know if you can see the cross there on this one. Yeah. Okay. And the red grape juice, which is symbolic of the blood. Uh, this promise was given in 1 Corinthians 11, starting at verse 23. Paul said, uh, quoting Jesus, uh, You honor me and you partake of me when you do this thing we call communion so if you're any wherever you are if you need to pause this replay this or whatever you can do that and uh partake of communion with us <clears throat> the lord's not worried if you have crackers or juice or whatever you have or bread you know it's a symbolic act and i believe this is has healing power in it i tell you to give us long life like psalm 91 16 said with long life i'll satisfy you and I'll show you my salvation. Uh, this is not a joke. This is not a ritual alone. This has spiritual power. I really believe it. Look at me. Do I look okay? Do I look like a young man? You don't know my age. You don't know. You don't know. I'm still younger than Methuselah. Someone asked me my age yesterday. I was like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> I stopped talking about it so long ago. You know, the world is stupid. They make like Dracula, like he's a 600-year-old man, but he looks like he's 35, you know. You know, it's, you know that's the, the, devil's, the devil's drama, you know. They even know the principle. So someone said, when they saw, they saw a vision of Abraham in heaven, they said they looked into his face. He looked like a very young man. The glory was so strong in his face. Yet he was ancient, but he had a look of youth in his face. Why? The touch of God. All right, we receive the touch of God. Man, I feel the anointing right now. We receive the touch of God by the Holy Ghost, but this is, this is something powerful right here. So I, I just decree healing because you're receiving the touch of Jesus. I, he said, this do as often as you do it, you, meaning you can do it every day if you want, all the time. <clears throat> you're, you're honoring me, and I'm going to honor you because you're honoring me. Long life. I don't care what your number age is. Don't worry. I cancel it in Jesus' name. The best anti-aging thing is the Holy Ghost. I know we have those things to take in the natural, and I take a lot of them. I take tons of supplements. I got the ginkgo. I got the I got the thiamine. I got the B12. I got the I got the royal jelly. I got the uh, all the omega. Uh, the complete one, the expensive one that has all the omegas. I take that twice a day. I take the <coughs> echinacea, <coughs> take the zinc. I take the 60,000 IU vitamin D3. I took it again last night. But trust me, I do all of that. I believe in that. And you want to get to where you have a more vegetable diet, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables. Use your juicer. Blend a smoothie for yourself. Drink those life. Take in the the garlic and the ginger and all. I take all that all the time. I do. I believe in that. I believe in that. It helps. Anything to do for your health is good. 
but the Holy Ghost, <laughs> there's nothing natural that's a match for him. And this here, the life of Jesus himself, there's no match for that. So let's do this also all the time. This is more important. But take all your other stuff. You know, I'm amazed at people, they just eat like uh, such a poor diet. Oily, fried food, fast. In America, they call it processed food. And you wonder why they're all sick with all kinds of diseases. It's horrible. You're supposed to eat natural stuff. And don't mock vegetarians like they're weird. Like, I, I'm not a vegan person. I never, I don't have to do that. But all that vegetable stuff is good, man. Life from the, <coughs> from the earth, not processed food. And the thing that they're poking everybody with now, you don't know what they put in that. It's very bad. So the world is not your friend. You don't want to take their stuff. But this is from Jesus. You get it? According to the scripture. And then you take all the natural stuff that you can get from the earth and from companies that can make organic, natural. <clears throat> or if you're growing your own, you can have your own stuff and have that kind of healthy lifestyle. They all go together, but this right here is powerful. So we're gonna partake in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ, who's the head of the church, and say, Lord, I'm, t I'm partaking of you. There's a scripture in John, uh, I don't have the, uh, the verse of it handy, maybe someone could type it in later uh, on the comments here, but it says, unless you eat of my flesh, it sounds crazy, and drink of my blood, you don't have life in you. So God expected us to do this. Also, why do people get saved and they get baptized? Do they have to get baptized? Would, would, would someone be saved if they never got baptized and yet they're born again? Yeah, I, I'd say so. But it's just a symbolic thing of letting the old thing wash away and coming up with new life. It's a thing we do that has a spiritual significance. This is that also, okay? So we're going to partake of this. I just believe for more healing, more health, more strength from the Lord himself as we do this in Jesus' name. And it's part of the covenant. All right, let's partake. <clears throat> Paul said later in 1 Corinthians 11, examine yourself. We could talk about that in another session. In fact, I've explained that before. A simple way to do it is, am I living for God? Do I love God? That's where it starts. Do I want more of Him? Yeah. That's the start of examining yourself. Partaking unworthily, I believe if you love God, you can't. Because you're doing it with a pure motive for more of Him. Nothing bad about that. Nothing unworthy about that. So there you go. I have a lot. I take nine. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost, one for me, one for my health, one for my prosperity, one for our partners around the, uh, of the ministry, one for, one for the people that we're going to meet. And in myself, I include our family, people, and then uh, to advance the kingdom. That's why I take several, because I want all of that. I got a revelation about that. So you can follow me as I follow Christ. If you just take one or two, it's okay. Because I remember years ago, I, I took one and I didn't feel satisfied. And the Lord says, you think you can take another one? I see that scripture. Thank you, Rose. Yes, John. 653 to 63, the passage of scripture there, yeah. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord uh, said, you want more of me? I said, yeah. So then I, I was in another conference at church where they, they give out the little packets, you know, with the one piece of bread, uh, one piece of this coin thing on the top, whatever it's made out of, and uh, you peel the thing and then peel the top, you take this piece here, and then you open the other part below it and you can have it, it's like the size of this but it has a wrapper on the top with the wafer like in the top, you know, communion. So this is what I did. I just prayed the ushers weren't looking. I grabbed a whole handful of them. 
I told you I have a thousand people in the church, in the conference, you know. You're not going to miss a few. I'm not stealing. I'm t- this is God's holy day. He wants me to have more. I'm sure no one can have a problem with that. I grab a whole handful of them, and I take the one with everybody, and I put the rest in my pocket. And I, I, the next day in my car, I take one. I'm in the house at night, I take one. It's like, thank you for the church. It's part of the church to provide bread, yeah. Bread of life and the bread of that. So I have a whole bunch. People used to laugh. People that know me, they're like, prophet, you. I said, yeah, I need it. This is life. Or else I go to the Christian store like we did ourselves. We buy a whole boxes of them ourselves. We've done that. Because I want to have a lot. I don't know about you, but I want a lot of God. Can we lift our hands? <laughs> I want a lot of him. I want all of him. We need it in this crazy world. Let me prophesy again to everybody. You will live long and not die. I spoke this over my doctor, the doctor, my doctor yesterday when I was there. I said it to him. I was there to have to check up as I was mentioning before in the in the broadcast. <clears throat> I said, <clears throat> I bless you and you will you will have a long life. He said, thank you. I received that. I need that. You'll be blessed. You'll be healed. You'll be healthy. Everything. You'll be successful. He's like, thank you. Wow. So be it in Jesus' name. The scripture that says you live and not die, that's for you and me. And the scripture that says with long life, God will satisfy us. Psalm 91 16, that's for us. In Jesus' name. So be it. No premature death, it's canceled. No cancer, it's canceled. No C virus, it's canceled. No degenerative disease, it is canceled in Jesus' name. You're not going to have it. You're going to be healthy. Strong. Now, what we're talking about, the natural things, and I've taught on this a lot, we'll do a lot of that too. Take care of the body with the natural things. God does work with that. He works with doctors. One doctor, a doctor's like a mirror. You can ask him all the questions about yourself, and you, he can tell you from his expertise medically, like what's going on, and you get your answer. That's great. He's worth his, whatever you pay him, it's worth it. That's great. Doctors are great. Nutritional things are great. But what's more great is Jesus <laughs> and his power. Say that. Woo! We love you, Lord. Okay, I'm signing off. Thank you. Share this with everybody. From Papa Prophet here, Thomas Matthew the Fourth. I love you. I love you. I want the best for you. In Jesus' name. And you go out and make it a great day and this is a great week coming and I'll talk to you.